Welcome to session 14 of LTEC 676. I want to begin this week by taking a look at the calendar. I want to take a look at the calendar because we're coming up on the end of the semester. And so I just want to make sure we're all on the same page about how much time is left in the course. Now, of course, this video represents the beginning of session 14. Then we have a session 15 and then we'll have our final session, session 16. In other words, we only have three weeks left in the semester. Now today, I'm assigning the final paper, and that final paper is going to be due at midnight on Monday, December 16th. So that effectively gives you three full weeks to work on that final paper. So let's talk about the final paper. Now, what is the assignment? Well, the assignment is to write a paper that synthesizes the main ideas of LTEC 676. Keep in mind that the word synthesize means combine a number of things into a coherent whole. So that's your goal. One way to think about a synthesis paper is to write a summary of the main ideas of LTEC 676 for someone who wasn't able to take the class. How would you synthesize and summarize the class for them? Why do I want you to do this? Well, I want you to analyze what you've learned this semester. What are the parameters of the final paper? Now, the length is deliberately short. The length of the final paper should be between five and six pages. These are double space pages and that page length excludes references and an appendix page. Your final paper should also include the four concept maps that you've developed this semester. In other words, you should include a copy of your concept maps in an appendix at the end of your paper. These pages of the appendix do not count against your overall page limit. In terms of style, your writing should be polished and academic in nature. And of course, as we've been doing all semester, you should be following APA style. And importantly, you should draw explicitly on the course readings throughout your final paper. I wanted to show you a sample outline. If I was to write this paper, this is how I would outline the paper. This is just a suggestion. You don't have to follow this, but I think for some of you, this might be helpful insight into what I have in mind for a final synthesis paper. For the first page, I would dedicate that to an introduction. I would explain what I'm going to talk about and why. On the second page, I would talk about the first big idea of the course. I would explain what that big idea is. I would provide some examples of that big idea as it relates to education and technology. And I would talk about why that big idea is important. On the third page, I would introduce another big idea and I would follow the same pattern. What is it? What are some examples of it? And why is it important? I would do that again with a third big idea on page four. And then on page five, I would write a conclusion to the paper. I would review what I talked about and I would discuss what it all means in relation to what an educator should know about educational technology. I would use page six to list all of the references that I cited in the previous pages. And I would use the seventh page as an appendix. And there I would include concept maps versions one, two, three, and four. So that is just a sample outline. It might help some of you, but I wanted to give you an idea of what the final paper could look like. Okay, so let's move on. Now, believe it or not, we have reached our final theme of the semester. So we've worked our way around, most recently talking about giving voice and disempowering structural inequalities. And in the last couple of weeks, we are gonna focus on gender and digital equity. Now to get us started, I wanna talk a little bit about historical perspectives on gender and education. And as usual, I'm keeping over here off to the right, our dimensions of equity in education, fairness and inclusion. And I wanna talk about these historical perspectives because I think it provides important context for the weeks ahead and our thinking about gender and digital equity. Now, importantly, we need to recognize that females have endured differing educational expectations and opportunities compared to their male counterparts. 
Now, I know for many of you in this class, this is a no-brainer. You have actually lived and experienced these differing expectations and opportunities. But for some folks, you may not be as familiar with some of these aspects of the history of education. So let's take a look at some ways in which education has been gendered over the years. So one example is, believe it or not, schools sometimes had different entrances for the sexes as well as separate playgrounds for boys and girls. In addition, schools often used sex-differentiated curriculum, such as focusing on needlework, cookery, and laundry for females, as opposed to reading, writing, and arithmetic. In addition, girls were expected to fulfill the roles of quote-unquote good wives and little mothers, which resulted in erratic school attendance. Middle-class girls were largely educated for the marriage market. They were prepared to be makers of homes, a role that superseded all others in and out of school. In addition, policies endorsed the view that women were different from men biologically, socially, intellectually, and psychologically. Furthermore, men often dominated the work of schools, government, and teacher unions. Finally, teachers often clustered student behavior into two categories, one for boys and another for girls, drawing on oppositional constructions of masculinity and femininity. Essentially, boys equaled livelier, adventurous, boisterous, independent, loyal, and aggressive behavior, whereas girls represented obedient, tidy, orderly, fussy, bitchy, and gossipy behaviors. So, so that's quite a list that really shed some light on the differing educational expectations and opportunities that females have endured relative to their male counterparts. Of course, in 1972 in the United States, we had Title IX, which was the federal law effectively barring sex discrimination in school sports and academics. And that has had a significant impact on some of the expectations and opportunities of women. And so in the weeks ahead, we're really going to focus on how that historical perspective and how 1972's Title IX has influenced gender and digital equity. We're going to examine how gender intersects with technology in general and educational technology in particular. Okay, everyone, that's all we have time for today. Have a great week, and I'll see you in Canvas.